Previously on the Embracing the Journey podcast. When you date a sociopathic narcissist, looking back, you can only feel sorry for them. Mm -hmm. I think I slipped into this dark, like depression being with him. He terminated my contract without my authorization via my email under my name. Do you feel that this relationship at 22 yeah. <clears throat> was meant to happen the way that it happened for you to get where you are? Welcome back to Embracing the Journey podcast. One thing that I've really wanted to dive into and I just haven't had the right person and yeah. it seems like you just walked in the door just with this aura of like, I'm the right person. <laughs> so we're going to have to do it. What's it like being a woman in business in 2023? So um, I actually love it. I have not, I feel like for the first time in my life, like I am being taken very seriously. Um, it could come with age. It could have come with experience that I've had but when I talk to people and I look them straight in the eye they take me seriously and um being a female in business to me is like the ultimate demonstration of like we are empowered because we can do this like we've come such a long way that I'm so grateful and you know I'm part of the chamber of commerce now and I meet a lot of other female business owners a lot of you know businesses are female to own now, you know? And the only times where I've kind of felt a little bit like, mm, if I wasn't a female, would this have happened? Would have been when I was doing the build out on my gallery mm. and I had some people give me some quotes on electrical and certain things as far as like construction goes. I was like, mm, I'm trying to think. I, I had a feeling that, they were pricing things a little too high because they assumed that I didn't have an understanding of the work that they were going to be doing. And this is happening in 2023. It is. Yeah. It's, you know, it's kind of like that whole thing where, oh, if you, you know, go get your oil change and you're a girl, you're probably going to get charged more. Unfortunately, that's still a thing. However, I have very strong boundaries and I'm very, although friendly, like when I... Um, I'm a direct communicator. So I ask direct questions. I get the answers that I'm looking for. And if I feel like something's not right, I'm going to ask about it. I'm not going to just let it go and let it blow over. So I haven't had, um, I really haven't had any uh, negative things to say about being a business, female business owner in 2023. If anything, I feel like it would set a good example to females that maybe feel like they're still having to struggle to, to feel validated and to feel good. It's like look up to people that are doing it, to mm -hmm. the politicians, to the to the doctors, to the surgeons, to the, you know, all kinds of people in non objectifying fields that's yeah. the thing is like in a field where you know one thing i love so much about art about my art business is it's not about this it's not about my you know kind of um the superficial aspect of it it's really about what i can deliver you know what kind of art can i present to the community and so that is empowering i think it's very empowering to lead with your mind over like your body. And I think that that sometimes comes with age, you know, because right. maybe it would have had a different um, thought on that in my 20s. If someone said, what is female empowered? When do you feel empowered? I probably would have said, I feel empowered when I'm in like a, a tight dress, my hair is done. And now it's like, I feel empowered when someone said, that was so impactful, what you said or what you delivered or that painting resonated with me so much or you have it such an interesting mind you know so i don't yeah i don't lead with my um appearance at all i lead with my with my brain love it so you own a gallery yeah what's it like backstory yeah so i was 
in a gallery walking around and I noticed that there was only one other person in this gallery and it was a woman. Right. And as I'm walking around, I'm noticing that like she's focused on her task. Right. But I knew she knew I was there. The question that I guess I'm asking is if you have no employees and it's just you and your gallery with all the things that you loved, all the things you've sunk your heart and soul in and two bigger males walk in. Yeah. Are you comfortable or are you? Yes, I'm, I'm comfortable. Yeah. I don't, um, I don't ever, I'm an energy reader, (laughs) so I'll go off of energy. If they come in and they're, you know, have a very serious demeanor and they look, you know, like, intense or something like that, then I might, you know, but everyone that comes in. So my whole motto with my art gallery is inclusive, like inclusivity. So I'm very inclusive with everyone. Doesn't matter, you know, who you are, you know, I will be welcoming to you. I will not feel threatened by two guys unless they look like they're going to rob me. Yeah. You know, then I'm. And we're praying that that hasn't happened. No, it hasn't happened. Oh, thank you, goodness. Um, so, no, I wouldn't have an issue with that. I think men are great. I really don't. I I don't have like a um, a problem with men male energy at all. Like it, it's quite like I actually feel very like masculine a lot of the times too. So what is that? Well, I'm a bit confused. Yeah, you don't present. You don't present that way. Yeah, I, I don't really present that way. I definitely am very much in my feminine energy a lot of the time. But when I switch to like work mode, I am more in like a masculine energy. I'm very assertive, very straight to the point, get it done. Um, I'm strategic and efficient. And I have that kind of like um, – that energy to me, it honestly reminds me a lot of my dad. I'm very similar to my dad. And so, yeah, I think that everything is kind of a balance of both, right? Both feminine and masculine. And I and I thrive in both energies, but I tend to re- really thrive more when I have more of those kind of like masculine traits come out. What is a common misconception when people see you? Because- I could see the energy that you give off, which is like comforting. It's like warm. It's like, hey, like I'm open to talk to whomever. Right. Do men or women, Mm -hmm. do they misconstrue that as you maybe flirting or you maybe (laughs) showing interest? What would that look like um, in the space that you're in? You know, maybe uh, I don't. I've never thought of myself as being a flirtatious person. I'm just very engaging and I really like to connect like one-on-one with people. I like good eye contact. I like a sincere conversation and like depth to Mm -hmm. people. And so um, I don't know what people's perception of me would be. I suppose that they, that I'm, you know, friendly, you know, that that's probably what they would think. Um, unless I'm in a bad mood, maybe they, they, I don't know. That's a good question to ask you. I don't know. What was your first impression of me? And strong. Okay. I think, I think strong and confident, okay. um, was a very much so boasting, of, uh, appearance of you when you walked in. Also the way you present yourself on, on social media, um, informs people that, You know what you're doing. You're really good at what you do. And it's not like thrown in in people's face that Mm -hmm. you're like this like megastar, which is which is awesome. Right. I don't feel like a megastar. But I think that's what makes it awesome. Right. Like a a person that's good at their craft usually lets their craft speak for them. Mm -hmm. But I feel like this day, this day and age with social media. Right. Like the self-promotion is the best promotion. Right. And um. I think it's refreshing that you don't give off that type of energy. That yeah, like I don't. I I'm. I feel like people who know me know what I stand for. They know that I'm very accepting, very open minded, and strong. And I stick up for people. Stick up for myself. Um, I also um, 
I don't feel like I need to lead with like flirtatious energy. I think if someone reads that I'm being flirtatious, it's a, it's a wrong read because I'm just being me. I see connecting with people as being like the greatest thing. So when I'm look, giving someone, you know, eye contact and kind of asking them engaging questions, it's because I'm genuinely interested to get to know them better. I'm, I'm not so that clear. I'm not that flirty. I don't even, I really don't know how to how to flirt. Like I don't <laughs> In your 30s? Well, I mean, like, how do you flirt? Like, do you laugh? We're going to be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Different. Strange. Offbeat. Visionary. Genius. Amazing. What makes you different makes you great. Embrace your punch. Welcome back to Embracing the Journey podcast. So how do we flirt? Um, honestly, I couldn't answer that. Exactly. Say something, maybe like saying something funny. See, that, see no, because I crack jokes if the room is au- like awkward, sometimes I'll start like cracking jokes to kind of loosen up the energy. And I'm not flirting. I'm simply just trying to make people like feel good and smile. That's that's it. Yeah. So. So. So you own a gallery. Yeah. OK, we, we, we've established that. What kind of art do you do? Yeah. Like what? What does it look like? What? Describe it to me. Totally. So I represent over 10 different West Coast artists. Um, I also have my own artwork in my gallery. And it's all modern contemporary artwork. What Um, what does that mean? So uh, modern artwork is basically, uh, the best way to describe it is most of it is abstract. Because that, the past like 20 years or so, has been the predominant like art form that people have like enjoy. So it's the type of art that you'll see um, in like most really like, you know, upscale hotels or it's these kind of like abstract forms that you can interpret in really any way that you want. I've always gravitated towards like abstract because it's just limitless what you can see and how you can interpret it. And there's so much beauty in that because everyone that purchases a, an abstract painting has a different story for it. Right. They see something completely different. So what, so you see, a? are you on like canvases? Are you yeah, on? Yeah, so I paint on uh, canvases and I do fluid abstract art. Oh, so. these words. Okay, so I know what fluid means. <laughs> and we and you just explained I'll abstract. I'll simplify it. The, Please. I use acrylic paints, which are water-based paints, and I thin the paints by mixing different kind of solutions within them, including water, separately. So let's say I have red, orange, blue. I thin them separately in different cups until I get the solution, the kind of consistency that I want. Um, and then I use different cups and I layer the paints on top of each other. And the style of my art is that that is where the art happens first. It happens in the cups before you pour the cups onto the canvas. Natalie, or how did you know how to do this? I'm self-taught. I was living in LA and I didn't want to do drugs and go party and hang out with a bunch of weird A-listers that were never going to help your career go any places. Like I would get invited to parties at the Hills all the time and I would say no to every single one because I don't want to sign an NDA. I don't want to give my phone to security and not know where my phone is and then I'm trapped. Mm -hmm. Like, no, that's trouble. That's like, you know... Risk and management. So risk management, right. you know. Um, it just freaked me out. I never wanted to do that. So I, I wanted to stay away from all of the things that would take me away from being a serious working actress. That that was my goal, serious working actress. And that's exactly what I did. So in turn, I I auditioned for this uh a Target commercial, which I ended up getting. It was a national commercial. And right after it, I w- went to a, an art store, picked up like $500 worth of supplies because I was like, I'm just going to start painting. Like that's going to be out, Just out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. I was like, let's do it. And I started experimenting. I accumulated so much art in my apartment that I started to like sell it at like farmer's markets and like smaller markets. And it 
sold. And so then people would come to me and ask for custom work. I was like, oh my gosh, can I do this? And then I started to work bigger art shows. And then I got into some really big art galleries down in LA. And then I was like, okay, COVID hit. And I'm like, I need to do this full force. Like I need to 100% commit to my art form and open up a website and get a gallery and it was like I had this whole plan, you know, and I created a business plan of how I was going to take this, basically what was a side hustle, a hobby, and make it into a full-blown career. Wow. Yeah. I'm I'm impressed, (laughs) right? And I, I couldn't take $500 on the chin I know that was probably not like because you know what I did and I, this is funny because when I talked to artists I said I went there and I was like I want to get the best paint and it's like who starts with the best paint but right. you know what I don't regret that because with fluid art you have to use very high quality acrylic or else it'll crack after you pour it so it did introduce me to the materials that I would end up using for years after it too but it was like, yeah, I mean, you know, I was I was making money. Like I was working as an actress and model down in LA. I was super, super busy. So my downtime was like I enjoyed it because mm-hmm. when I would have time where I wasn't working, you know, I wanted to work on something that brought me a lot of peace and joy. And it's like I have a lot of creativity within me um, that I wanted to like develop, further develop. But my art back then, I I look at it and I'm kind of like, that's interesting. It's just a right. little different from now, but it's evolved do, a lot. Do we, do we as an audience know any people that have bought in your stuff that we would see on TV or? Next week on the Embracing the Journey podcast. What are some challenges that you have to, to face every day? To not ever compare yourself to other people that are doing something similar remind yourself like you're always in your own lane no matter what it's your own journey like you're in your own lane there's also a big factor of loneliness when you're an entrepreneur you spend a lot of time alone whatever whatever we eat we have to go out there and kill right we have to go out there and get it 